This here is the first UPS unit which I ever owned. I got it when I was maybe 14 years of age or so. Still in what we call high school, but the US calls something else. And this thing has been around. It's obviously a Smart GPS 420VA model. It's from 1998. And uh, as I trash picked it back in whenever I got it, it was. Well, I'm 22 now, so it's 8 years ago. And uh, put it in use. The internal battery was, of course, shot. But uh, I've scavenged an old BMW battery, which I ran out through <laughs> this very crude hole in the side for a while and it worked pretty good and I used it for a few years until that battery went entirely bad I didn't know anything about electronics by then so I just hooked red to red essentially and used some zip ties around the poles to just a couple of wires coming out of it which weren't even soldered in but were just uh, attached onto the internal flat uh, spade, spade connectors in the unit and uh, after that I started getting more into electronics and I got a few more UPS units, some 750 VA APCs and, and 1K VAs and so forth and after having run this for a few years and this thing finally found its way uh, onto my server where it's been sitting for three or four years by now and it's been in continuous use, it's gone through quite a few batteries after some time I upgraded the hole I think it was when I installed this uh, non 12 volt uh, Anderson connector which has some piece, pieces filed away in it to make it fit with a uh, I'm not sure if this is 12 or 24 volt Anderson but whatever, it's an Anderson so, so that I could push the connector through the hole and up until last night there was no relief or, or anything there. I added this plastic thing last night since I was doing some maintenance on it. And this has just been sharp metal edges for many years. And these cables are, yeah, look, look thereafter. Thankfully it hasn't shorted out yet, which is a good thing since the fuse is internal on the PCB. So if we get a short on the cable, it's just going to sit there and spark until the battery is empty or something catches fire. Also up until last night uh, that original zip tied uh, b battery connector system was still in use. Uh, these, this particular plug had just had these two uh, round hole connectors zip tied to the terminals of my old UPS battery. And it's been incredibly reliable. I mean, this thing has never ever acted up. It hasn't had a single problem in its entire life. Uh, it has behaved a bit strangely, though. Mainly, it has a tendency to tick its relays, one of them, very quickly when it's running on batteries. And I'm not sure if it's changing some transformer taps or what it's doing, but it sounds a bit horrible. It, it can take several times a second on a bad day. And that's probably because it's not designed to run on a battery with uh, this much capacity. This is an 80 amp hour one. I've run 60 amp hour batteries before. I haven't known about their condition though. But uh, the voltage on this is obviously going to drop a lot slower than the internal 7 amp hour battery that it was designed to use. So it's probably designed to just tick that relay once and as the battery voltage keeps dropping not tick it again. But it just has a, doesn't have enough hysteresis to cope with a battery this size. It doesn't seem to affect the output of the unit though, so I haven't really cared. It's not a pure sine well wave model, so it's very easy to just uh, switch the relay while, the, while there's no current running through the transformer. Since the jagged sine wave just goes from 0 volt to plus 325 to 0 volts again. And it just in, stays in the zero region for quite some time, as long as the battery isn't extremely empty. It never really turns into a pure square wave. Well, it never should anyway. But, yeah, after all these years, I mean, this thing's soon, <laughs> 98, 2008, is approaching 20 years of age, so it, it is an APC, so it has the bad 22 microfarad capacitor problem that seemingly every single APC unit ever made has, 
and indeed all of these 22 microfarad caps were practically open circuit. They were at about 15 microfarads or so, most of them, but they had an internal resistance of tens to almost 100 ohms, so they basically weren't doing anything. I also replaced two of these uh, 330 microfarad caps with 470 microfarad ones. Not because we were bad, just because I was inside and messing it with it. And it still has two original caps, which are two Nishikon 1000 microfarad 50 volt caps, and I just didn't have any in stock, and they measured fine, so it's going to get to keep those for another service interval of perhaps 20 years. <laughs> Either way, this thing's going back to my server now. It still works just fine, just run a battery calibration on it. Uh, a somewhat annoying thing about these is they can sustain about 160, 170 watts continuously with no modifications whatsoever. They won't overheat, and that's about 50% of the rated capacity, which is really, really good. You can't get that out of a bigger unit. They are built uh, much closer to the margins. Uh, but uh, the battery constant, uh, you can't configure these to think that they have external battery packs connected. So this thing basically thinks. I think it says that it has about three hours of runtime with my server when uh, with a battery of this size, this one is measured at about 40 amp hours, it's rather closer to eight hours of runtime. So that is a bit of a downside, which is why I'm kind of considering replacing it, but I don't have the heart to. This thing has been far too reliable for that, and with new caps to boot, hey, it's going to run for another year, 15 years. Anyway, that beeping noise was my food timer, so be right back. And there we go, dinner's done. So, as for hardware modifications to this unit, aside from the huge finger friendly hole in the side, not too much dangerous stuff close to it anyway, uh, I've just done one change to this unit, and that is to change a voltage divider in it so that it. Uh, charges for battery at a slightly lower voltage than it originally does because if we have a look at the, the data on it we can see that uh, it believes that its battery voltage is 13.94 volts and it was quite close to that when I first got it and the curious story is, the first few years I ran this thing, I knew that the battery voltage was a bit too high, but I wasn't keen enough on electronics to actually m modify it, so what I did was I connected a load, namely my wireless router, just off the battery charge on this thing, which brought the charging voltage down to about 13.7 or something along those lines, volts, which worked surprisingly well. I never ended up running the battery entirely dead because of it. Of course, a wireless router just uses a couple of watts of uh, power, but uh, the battery charger in this is a half amp charger, so it was probably working quite hard there for a couple of years. Anyway, before I actually put it in proper service use, I did modify the voltage divider. At first, uh, I uh, the way to do that is you just parallel a resistor over another resistor. I believe it's resistor 39, which is somewhere around here. It's uh, fairly easy to find if you find the schematics for these, which are available somewhere online. Anyway, I first used a 1 meg resistor in parallel with it, and that gave me a charging voltage of about 13.4 volts, which uh, is a bit too low. It's Even for a flooded car battery like this, it's too low. So, it's been that way up until now, just the other day, where I changed out the resistor for a 2.7 meg, giving us about 13.6 volt for load voltage, which is fine. These uh, UPSs only have a stupid battery charger, so it's just a constant voltage, current limited uh, battery charger. No multi-state charging or anything of that matter. If you are using one of these APC UPSs, well, practically any APC UPS with a transformer, you should equalize your batteries every now and then. I do it about yearly, just charge them up to 50, about 15 volts per 12 volt battery and let them set until the current start, stops uh, dropping. And that, that way you won't end up with a single sulfated weak cell that uh, kicks your battery out prematurely. 
leaving you helpless but to replace it. Hard picking. It's hard picking up a coffee cup through the viewfinder. It's not a 3D camera. Anyway, I'm not sure what else was to say about this unit. It's worked fantastically well, even though these little caps have been done for for probably a long time because they are no-name caps. Uh, it's really it's made a couple of strange noises, and that seems to be all that happens when the caps go bad. It hasn't ever failed me. And yeah. They can handle about half load continuously with no modifications whatsoever, which is great. They only have four switching transistors, so they aren't exactly super heavy duty, and the heat sinks are those stupid APC ones that are just a piece of metal that's bent. Specific specification wise, these units really aren't particularly impressive. We've got our basic connections on the back, a couple of outlets, one of these stupid surge protector outlets which you always end up plugging the server into and of course no USB because this is from 1998 for those who aren't even know, you can tell the date of a unit by looking at the serial number this one is something something 9846 so that's usually 46 week 98 and this is stands true even over black ones and I've seen it on some of the newer ones, I'm not sure if it's on the really newest ones. Also, you probably shouldn't use this LAN protector on a anything more than 10 megabit line. <laughs> I doubt it's uh, particularly well shielded on the inside. So yeah, that's my first ever UPS, the first inverter I ever owned. I got it for free and ran it for 15 years, or thereabout. Well, no, I didn't run for that long, but it's probably run that long. And it's still going strong. I'm not looking to replace it anytime soon. Now I'm just gonna head on upstairs, I've got a spare UPS on my server, and plug this thing back in. The other UPS is a much more modern Smart UPS SC series, which is much lower quality, and I don't trust it anywhere near as much. Cheerio.